there was more reactions to fictional scenarios as far as, you know, what if the president tweeted? And then what if North Korea? I mean, it has just been, you know, a fake news Olympics and some of other networks. So um, luckily nothing happened, but I, I think there's an opportunity for uh, Hawaii and all the states, frankly, to get together and to drill out some of these things so in the future we can have a better reaction. No, there was an effort to lay blame on President Trump. I mean, I heard it myself. Mitch? Chris Mitch Rochelle, I mean, I'm in my almost late 50s, which is weird even coming out of my mouth, but I remember air raid drills when I was a kid. You know, we don't have that sort of civil defense infrastructure where children in school are even sort of taught what to do when there's an alert. I don't even know as, as an adult if I'd even know what to do where I live. Is this sort of a wake-up call that we probably need to just better educate everybody in this country in the highly unlikely event, but just so we're prepared? It, it, absolutely. I, I think there, there's no harm in doing that. We do live in a world where we, we do have threats, and I don't think it's something that we need to, uh, it needs to dominate our lives, but we need to have those sort of stock drills in place. I mean, we have those with uh, other types of emergencies, and I think it'd actually be healthy discourse. And for uh, Democrats in Congress, instead of whining and complaining and uh, talking about uh, tweets that didn't happen, they should look at uh, funding for Hawaii air defense systems and finding ways we can move forward and increase our, our, our intelligence assets to that respect, and, and we should have those drills and those conversations, I think. But if we were to have those drills and have those conversations, don't you think that would become politicized and say we're only having them because President Trump is so dangerous? Well, I think not necessarily. I mean, there's a certain degree of um, of governmental responsibility. I mean, the fundamental purpose of the government is actually to protect the people, the federal government and the states. I think that, uh, you know, Hawaii needed to do a better job of, you know, protecting its citizens. That, that's a terrible scenario. I mean, I, we could imagine being in New York or Washington, D.C., <laughs> thinking that a missile is coming in on, on the morning commute. It's, it's not a good feeling. So I think there's an opportunity to improve uh, the emergency response. And it just, I, I was actually surprised it was politicized, frankly. But, um, you know, unfortunately, that's the age we live in. I was going to say, those are the days we live in. Uh, Amy Holmes here. I wanted to get back to Iraq and the bombing that we saw there. Uh, given your experience as, as a war vet, uh, how stable is Iraq at this point? We understand that ISIS has largely been defeated, but yet we're still seeing these, these tragic, vicious suicide bombs. Right. Well, I think it's largely stabilized. I mean, unfortunately, you, you can't stop someone from uh, that's hell bent on, do, on, on engaging in a, a, frankly, a suicide attack. But you can work on intelligence assets to disrupt and learn about these attacks before they happen and other things. But it's, uh, you know, it, over the last couple of years, there have been many of these bombs. I, I don't, definitely don't want to diminish uh, the, the, the uh, injuries and death in this latest incident. But I, it has been trending in, in a better direction as far as the, the uh, security protocols and checkpoints. Uh, in the urban centers, but ultimately, finally, Iraq is taking charge of their own future, and that's what they need to do. The, the United States military cannot, you know, do everything. We need them to step up and make good on all the time uh, our men and women spent over there, many of which who were died and you know, have died and have been injured. Chris, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Chris Nywayne. Thanks for having me. Be well. We'll see you again soon.